If it's not on your calendar, you're less likely to attend a meeting, let alone plan to attend. Calendars are still pretty important in our lives. They play an important role in time management as we plan our day around the different tasks that we have to do. Calendars remind us of when our meetings are going to begin. And if we're organized, we review our calendar at the beginning of the day, or perhaps even the day before to see what's on the agenda. But when it comes to calendars with Microsoft Teams, it gets a little confusing. Um, when you have a Microsoft team and you have a, a calendar behind that team, it's shared with the team, uh, you can't get to it, you can't see it, you can't um, look into it. You can only see your own calendar. I want to put this scenario to you. You're organizing a meeting within Microsoft Teams. Uh, you want to have everyone attend that meeting, um, so you want to let them know, uh, but you also want that meeting to be within, your, uh, within each of their calendars. Currently in Microsoft Teams, there are a few options if you want to try and invite everyone to the meeting. You could add everyone one by one to the required field or the optional field. You could create a separate distribution list. This allows you to add all the members to that distribution list and invite that list to the meeting. But it's kind of backwards because you've already got the group together, right? And the Microsoft team. Hmm. And that would mean you'd have to manage two lists, the team membership itself and then the distribution list for inviting people to meetings. You could create the meeting, save it as an ICS file or something similar, um, and then ask everyone to download it and add it to their calendars. Or if the meeting is shared into a team channel, uh, you could go in, edit the message afterwards, at mention the team, and ask them to all add it to their calendars. But we all know that when it requires people to do something, um, to add it to their calendars, it's less likely to happen. Why can't it be as simple as sending out the meeting invite and knowing that it's going to be there in people's mailboxes so they can either accept or reject? Perhaps there is an easier way. Uh, at least I think I've found it and it's maybe with a, a team that you're about to create. So hold on before you create that team, let's have a few, look at a few options. Now it's one thing that I had um, seen or observed uh, way early on when Teams was quite early uh, and, and not quite out in, in GA yet. You could create a team and the mailbox was visible and you could see the mailbox behind it, you could see the calendar, but apparently it got a little confusing because people were emailing the group and not really using Teams for Teams. They were not using the chat function. And so they hid that. Microsoft hid that. Um, they hid the calendar, they hid the mailbox for a Microsoft team. You don't see it in Outlook anymore. But there is still a way to, to see that, uh, that calendar, that mailbox, and make um, full use of it uh, as a Microsoft team. So our starting point is to create it as an Outlook group, an Office 365 group created from Outlook. Firstly, I want to look at an example of a team that's been created from Teams. Um, this is a, a, you could say, a pure team. The team is um, HR Leadership. So we'll have a look at HR Leadership. Um, here's the team. Uh, it has a few channels there that are all purposed for different things, uh, events, recruitment, etc. Um, there are a number of members in that team. Let's have a look at that. We have... Yeah, a couple of owners and about 17 members and guests. Um, but this is a team that's been created from Teams. And when we go over to email, for example, we have a look in our, our full group of, or our full list of groups within the organization. There is no um, HR leadership team. All right, that's the name of the, of the team. It's not there. This one's something entirely different. Uh, I know that uh, this user is a member or at least an owner of the team so let's go in there we don't see it in that filtered list of the teams um, so yeah it's not actually visible and yet when we go to to use it um, let's say we want to create a channel meeting we'll go into calendar and create a quick one let's go in here uh, stand up and we won't require any attendees okay this is the part where I might have to add people one by one. Imagine having to add all 17, or if you've got a larger team, have to add all them uh, one by one there. So let's just uh, add this to uh, HR Leadership. There it is as a team. 
we'll drop it in the general channel and send that off. Right, so it's going to be in uh, Megan's calendar, the account that I have uh, signed in as. Um, you'll see if we go through to our team, HR leadership, and there's the, the channel meeting, so that's great. Um, but if we go over to one of the team members, Isaiah, and have a look in his calendar. Let's drop this over here so we can see the full week. You'll notice that there's nothing in there for Saturday. So even though he's a team member, he's not getting it into his calendar. And the point here is that if it's not in your calendar, then you're less likely to plan your day around it or even plan to attend. So that's that's the letdown. Now, um, that's from a team that has been created from teams. Let's have a look at what happens uh, with a team where we have created it as an Office 365 group from Outlook. Uh, or perhaps we've done it from other ways, like a SharePoint site, or maybe our starting point has been Planner. All of these different methods will create a, um, an Office 365 group with a mailbox behind it to start with. Um, so let's have a look at that. The group we're gonna look at is Mark 8 Project. Let's go back over to Megan's view of things. Here's the Mark 8 Project team. Um, again, we've got a team with a bunch of members in it. All right, there we go, again, 17 members, and we'll just expand there that you can see that Isaiah Langer is, is there, that's the chap that we're working with on the other side of things. Right, so we can see the team. Let's have a look at whether we can see that team within, there we go, we have a team. It is visible and available within um, within Outlook, but we can see that um, it is a team. It has a mailbox. We can go in and we can see the calendar. Um, so here's one way to do that. Open up the calendar, and there we go. We've got Mark 8 Project Team plus Megan's own calendar. And as you can see, um, she has created that um, stand-up meeting there, and it's available in her calendar there. So that, oh, and that's, sorry, that was from the HR leadership team. Now we're gonna go on and create a, a, a channel meeting for the Mark 8 project team. And you'll see that also appear in Isaiah's um, calendar as well. Go through to calendar again. We'll drop in one immediately after that. Mark 8 stand up. and we'll add that to the channel meeting. Right, drop that into general. Okay, so we're not inviting anyone specifically and we'll send that off. Right, so it's creating that meeting. We can go through to the team, we can see that it has created a, um, there we go, Mark 8 stand-up, so it is a, a meeting that's been shared to the channel. And the workarounds you would have to do in a, a regular team is that, uh, let's have a look back at a, the uh, HR general leadership. Um, here's our stand up. The suggestion is that one way is you could go in and edit this. Whoops, will that mention the team? So edit. Yeah, one other thing I wanna put there is also the, the subject. Stand up and then we'll say, at team, please add this to your calendar. Right, so that's at least gonna send out an at mention to people, um, but that's the only way you can really let people know, well, there's a few other ways, but they're really sort of clunky kind of ways of being able to let people know that this is a meeting that you want them to add to their calendar. Um, so if we went back over and had a look at Isaiah's um, view of that, go back over to Teams and to General, so we can see that there, there we go, there's a, a team mention. Um, and you know, if we went to Activity, of course, there's the at mention there as well. So it's getting my attention. And as a person who I've been asked to add it to my calendar, then I can do that here, I can add that to my calendar. Too many steps, right? 
too many points where I'm relying on my team members to go through these steps and add it. But really what we're looking for is what we're about to do in Mark in the Mark 8 team. If we go back over to here, Mark 8, we have created that Mark 8 stand-up meeting. Um, it is a team that was based on Office 365 group. Right, so it has the mailbox in the background, but it's also visible as, as is the calendar. And what is Isaiah's experience of that? Well, let's go back over to his calendar here. And we'll change it to the week view so we can see it through Saturday. There's the meeting. Interesting. Right, so it's in his calendar. Um, and it's down to him to, to accept or decline or, or, or you know usually respond in the usual ways but at least there's a block there that says here's a meeting you're tentative you can choose whether or not to plan around that accept or reject it so it's already a huge advantage all right so we'll actually accept that of course now how does this work why is this actually working this way if we go back over to the view of the um, the different the team itself the market project team was created, first of all, as an Outlook group, an Office 365 group, uh, and then it was made into a Microsoft team. And what has happened, um, if you can have, if you can see up here, that one of the defaults that you can turn on, um, in fact, as you create it as an Outlook group, the default is that you follow activity within your inbox. Now this means that when an invite is sent to the team, it is distributed to all the team members. So that's great. Now, um, if we uh, we can see where these settings are, um, are um, taking effect. Uh, so when I am creating an Outlook group, um, I can choose to tick this box, or it's actually ticked by default, to say send all group conversations and events to members' mailboxes. This is why the event is sent through it's tentative and it's down to Isaiah to be able to accept it or, or not. One other thing there that I, I did enjoy in the past, early in the early days of Teams, was that when the group was, when the team was based on a group, an Outlook group, you could also leverage the mailbox in the background, and you could potentially allow um, people outside of the organisation to email to this this mailbox. So it means that as a team, I could use it to coordinate certain activities for maybe a, a sales group or a, a help desk res, a response group, um, and then coordinate our replies via the team and, and go back into the mailbox to use that. So how do we actually get to this point? Well, we, um, we do have one other um, group that we have created which hasn't been um, made into a team yet. So this was the project um, Hack Jam. It is a, a new Outlook group, which you can create. If you go through to, um, to Contacts or People um, and then go up to New Contact, when you create a new group in this screen, this is where you get your, your group name. You can make it public or private. Um, and this is where, by default, it is checked to, to show that all group conversations will be uh, and events will be sent through to their mailboxes. So I've created one of those already, Project Hack Jam. You notice that it is uh, still just an Outlook group. It hasn't been teamified, as they say, but it has all those other services that have been provisioned as well. Um, so we'll have a look at uh, turning this into a team. Let's go over to create or join a new team. Create a new team, and I can only do this, uh, only have this option because I am a um, existing team owner or existing group owner, rather. So create from an Office 365 group or team. Um, we'll choose an Office 365 group. There's our project hack jam. I'm a, the team or the group owner. And we'll create. And so it has already provisioned the SharePoint site in the background. It's already um, done the work in terms of the mailbox and the calendar and all the other things that every team needs to be able to coordinate a, a calendar. It's just that when it's created as a team from teams, when Outlook groups have not been part of that process at all, uh, you don't get to see the calendar or the mailbox. Um, so here we go, we've got our team, and uh, 
It's usually, yeah, it's dropped down there at the bottom. Let's go have a look back at our calendar and our, our um, people. All right, so that's people here. Go into all groups and we see Project Hack Jam. And what's different about it now, it now has Teams as an app that's part of this, this process. So our, our goal at the end of it was really to be able to make it easier for us to invite people along to, or team members along to meetings within our teams to ensure that the meeting invite uh, ends up in their calendar as a tentative invite so they can choose to accept and reject just like you would normally do if you were sending a meeting invite to a distribution list. You've seen how it works. It, it's because in the background, the Outlook group uses a shared mailbox and um, what has been turned on by default is that you are subscribed to activity in that mailbox. You follow the inbox. And so any email or events that are, are sent to that mailbox are also distributed to the members of that group. We've then teamified, we've made that group team and so we get the best of both worlds. We get a team with all the team functionality and we can encourage people to you know, go in there and use all the chat. But we've also got the shared mailbox and also very importantly for this episode, the calendar which allows us to see those, um, those events when we invite people along. Uh, particularly important with your channel meetings uh, where you don't wanna to have to go and go through all the rigmarole of adding people individually to the invite um, and all the team members, and you don't want to have to manage a separate distribution list, but rather leverage the group that you already have. Right. My hope is that Microsoft will find a better way to um, still encourage people to use Teams, but be able to expose that calendar, which we know is in the background, for a team that has been created from Teams. If we can do this from an Outlook group, then why can't we do it from within Teams? Uh, that's ten cents worth anyway. My team ten cents worth. Um, if you like the kind of opinions and thoughts that I have, and, and you want to discuss these things with me, then you know where to find me. I'm on uh, Modern Workplace Scenarios and uh, on YouTube on the dot com. So that's where my my blog site is. And you'll also find me on Twitter at Daryl as a Service. Thanks for watching.